bringing water from where it is to where, uh, to where it has to where it's needed. And so the, the Mekarovs, which is the national water company, was created in 1937, uh, again, you know, nine years before Israel became a nation. And, in 19, and, they, and they began construction on their, um, their, their national water carrier system, which is a really quite extraordinary system of pipelines and pumps, pump stations and what have you. And, they, and that system, the, the beginnings of it anywhere, were finished in 1964. That was a major accomplishment for that area and really had a lot to do with the uh, future uh, development and success of Israel as a country. Now, Mecca Road continues to be the agency that, that works very closely with the, uh, the national government, government of Israel on water planning issues. They, uh, they recognize the drought conditions. Uh, in Israel, when you look at their water planning, um, they take drought very seriously. To the point where, like, um, like Greg was saying, you know, they've got uh, desalination plants now in place. I think they're at about 75% of their supply now. And they're moving towards eventually building enough desalinization plants that they can be 100% supply their water, 100% from the ocean, from the sea. Meaning that if they get into another one of these 200 year long droughts, it's okay. Everything that is dependent on rainfall is gonna dry and blow away, but they will have all the water they need because the sea is an inexhaustible supply of water if you can just access it and use it. So they look at, uh, at their water planning very seriously and they're very forward looking. And I think that's one of the messages I'd like to bring today is that um, they make it a priority. They look at the, uh, the, the, the critical nature of water and, and how important it is that you have that in the water supplies, and you recognize what has happened in the past and what is what you've seen in your recent history, and when you recognize that, you make it a priority. You set your public policy to address that need. They look at things like uh, expanding their network uh, system that they already have in place and continue to improve it. They're, they're uh, really working on desalinization of seawater, like we just said. Um, agricultural use of treated sewer effluent, uh, they are the leaders. Uh, they're way out ahead of every other country in the world in terms of using their sewer effluent for agricultural purposes. I think they were, were they 95% I think uh, for, uh, for their sewer effluent? And the next runner up was um, a European country. I can't remember if it was Spain or it was one of those, but it was, it was something in the order of 60%. So they're way well ahead of the rest of the world in terms of the beneficial use of their sewer, treated sewer effluent. And that they're also looking at forward to protecting the water sources they have, like their groundwater. And they're leaders of conservation, the, the, drip, water, the drip irrigation we talk, that we talked about. You know, when I look here at the, uh, the vision of the, uh, the governor's plan uh, for the 50-year water vision, it's, it's, to me, there's a lot of similarities between the elements that are in there and the kind of talk and the kind of planning that uh, Greg and I saw when we were in Israel. It's looking to the forward and taking things seriously and being prepared and looking at what your options are and having a plan. And not just a one, two, three, four year plan, but a 50 year plan. That's the kind of thinking that Israel has adopted uh, in their water planning process. Definitely a similarity there. Uh, as far as the role of Wichita, and I can't speak for the state obviously, but I can speak for the city of Wichita, uh, we, uh, we recognize the value of this, uh, the state uh, water plan. And uh, we're enthusiastic uh, supporters and participants to the extent that we can uh, in the development of that plan. We see the obvious advantages that to include uh, you know, sharing ideas and um, approaches and, and resources and looking at solutions that may not make sense for just the city of Wichita, but make more sense in a regional kind of a context. Uh, when you look at water planning in Wichita, it's no different than, uh, than in Israel or any other place that takes water planning seriously. And water planning, probably a lot of the, the kind of the the, map, the the tactical detail water planning is going to is going to happen at the, the the individual sites where water is being produced and, and, and consumed. So, for example, in municipal water, you're going to be talking to cities. What what are individual city water plans? And we recognize that uh, there's going to be the need, and 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 it probably would be a good thing to promote. Uh, serious water planning at the various cities and municipal locations, the counties, what have you, uh, within the, within the, uh, the state. But you look at kind of the basic uh, components of water planning, you have drought protection. You know, are, is your, are you going to plan a water supply that protects you through the kind of drought that you, that you feel comfortable risk-wise? Um, you know, what kind of drought supply uh, projections do you, do you want to look at? 1% uh, drought, 2%, we'll talk about that in a minute. 
a, a drought response plan. What are you going to do when you do get to a drought? Better have a drought response plan in place. Uh, look at the role of conservation, because really when you look at it, water planning is a combination of supplying water and, and the use of water. So you either have, you have to affect the amount of water that's available and the amount of water that's needed. It's, you have to look at both of those, and conservation is definitely on the, the demand side. And then uh, the, uh, doing a supply and demand analysis, a serious demand uh, supply analysis that goes out like 50 years. And then finally, water quality. It doesn't do you much good if you have all kinds of water, but it isn't of adequate quality for you to be able to use it. So let's talk about drought for just a second. You know, it's really hard for me to wrap my hand, arms around 1% drought, 2% drought. You know, I know statistically 1% means once in 100 years and 2% means twice in 100 years, every 50 years. But what does that really mean? I mean, it's really hard for me to kind of make that real. Well, real life experiences, probably not very many of us in this room, but maybe a, maybe a few, uh, remember the 50s drought. Uh, that was a pretty severe drought, and that was, uh, that was a 2%. Um, the one percent drought—that's the one you hear about in uh, in *Grapes of Wrath*. You know, people moving to, to California because everything drew up, dried up, and they had to find work. And, and I mean, that was that was a real significant. That could cause a mass migration of people out of the uh, the middle part of the country. That's a one percent drought. Well, those are just one percent, two percent drought. What what do you think about a drought that lasts fifty years? We've got that in our history. Well, it's kind of like how much risk can you afford, can you buy down? What's What's your ability to, uh, to buy down risk? Can anybody buy down risk to, to zero? Uh, probably not. Um, uh, that means that even if you had a, a, a 50 year drought or a 75 year drought, you'd still have a system that was robust enough to be able to, to take care of it. But if you're Israel, they say the only thing that's acceptable is zero. We want to, in case there's, if we had a 200 year uh, drought like we have had in history before, we want to be okay, and so that's why they're making the commitment to spending the money and put, making it a policy priority to build these big desalinization plants. It's what kind of risk do you can you live with, and what kind of risk can you afford? So if you look at drought, you have to do some, some water supply planning. You know, if we had a, back when we had the, uh, the, the most recent drought, we were in the third year of the drought, and we're going, you know, oh man, what, what, what if this goes on for a while longer? We sure would like some rain, but what if we don't get any? We better start looking at what current conditions look like projected on into the future. And with this most recent drought, we looked at Cheney Lake and the uh, Equus Bend swell field. Those are our two sources of water for the city of Wichita. You know, we, we regionally serve uh, somewhere between uh, 450 and a half a million people uh, with, our, with our water supplies. So we look at the, uh, the, the pattern that we saw in those first two years and we projected it out, we go, ooh, look, you know, by about middle of 2015, we're out of water. We gotta do something about that. Well, let's look at our Equus beds. Well, you know, you look at Equus beds, it takes longer for it to draw down in a drought, but if all, if all you got is the Equus beds and you don't have Chini, you can't supply our water, to, we can't meet our demands with just the one water supply. We've grown into, a system to where we need to be able to rely on both sources to meet demands. This is the